One of the most interesting features in PowerPoint is the function called Morph. Today I'll show you how to use it and create fantastic and engaging slides. This function is located in the Transitions tab. When you hover over it, PowerPoint displays a small instruction. Move things on the previous slide to their new locations on the current slide. To get the best results, duplicate a slide, move things around, apply the morph transition, and anything you add or delete will fade in or out. OK, that's the theory. Let's move on to practice. Simply put, it works like this. If I insert an object on a slide number one, then duplicate this slide or copy that object and paste on another slide, then move the object to a different place on the next slide, and of course with the second slide selected, enable the Morph option, the magic happens. Between point A and point B, PowerPoint automatically applies this morphing dynamic animation. Furthermore, if I change the shape of this object on the second slide, an interesting transformation occurs. To make it even more interesting, I can change the fill color of this object. And it looks like this. Moreover, I can rotate this object. The effect will be like this. Or like this. However, if I type text into the object, Unfortunately, the morph transition won't work. PowerPoint treats these objects as two different elements, and it won't apply animation to such objects. There is no morphing transition here. To achieve this effect with text, we need to enter the text not within shapes, but separately in text boxes. Then we can overlay such a text box on the previously inserted shape. We can also change the morph settings to characters, and the effect is like this. Some characters fly on the slide. If both slides have the same words or a word, the morph function can animate them interestingly. We just need to change the morph settings to words. And then the word moves from one place on the slide to another. This is especially helpful if we have important words, keywords, and we want them to wander around different places on the slide. Then the audience's attention will focus on them. Now let's find a specific application for the morph transition. I see huge potential for this function when presenting numerical data. Instead of showing boring tables or charts from Excel, it's worth creating a series of shapes on several consecutive slides and connecting them with the morph transition. It's important for these elements to be shapes, not charts. Unfortunately, morph doesn't work on charts or tables. However, simple data visualizations can take the form of shapes. We just need to give them the right proportions. And let's see how it looks in slideshow mode. In the Morph Characters setting, some letters fly across the slide. In my opinion, this is an unnecessary effect that distracts attention from important data. It's better to leave the object's option enabled. Shrinking and enlarging charts create a much more interesting and engaging visualization. OK, another application of the morph function. Please have a look. I found these cartoonish images on Freepik and I placed them next to each other on the slide. And I would like to animate them using morph. So here's what I can do. I enlarge one of them
add a caption. Duplicate the slide and then do the same with the next characters. Finally, the end result looks like this. What I've shown here are just simple ways to use Morph. In my other videos, I demonstrate quite a few other possibilities for its application. For example, moving images create a quite interesting visualization. Even more advanced Morph capabilities can be found in the premium PowerPoint effect video. Cesare from our slide formation team, who created this presentation, worked on it for several days, but the effect looks fantastic. Lots of dynamics, a lot of movement, and the impression that's not a presentation but an animated film. This is a great opportunity to engage the audience. To create such a presentation, however, you need to work on it a lot. First of all, you need to adjust many elements, not only those on the slide, but also next to the slide, to make them slide in from behind the slide, or sometimes extend beyond the slide, to make them slide in from behind the slide, or sometimes extend beyond the slide. Yes, Morph can also give this effect, so instead of using standard animations from the Animations tab, it's much easier to place an object at point A then copy it and place it on another slide at point B. One of these points can even be outside of the slide. Uh, this way we get the effect of sliding in and out. How did you like this feature? Give me some feedback and let's stay in touch. And if you want to improve your presentation skills further, you can try my free training on PowerPoint tips and tricks. You will find the link in the description below this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.